Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 beta one is out to developers and Apple has shown everything at WWDC 2023 that we can expect when this releases later this year. So I thought we'd talk about some of the major features they've announced and later I'll have a video about iOS 17 beta one and all of the different changes in it. Now, the first thing is the supported devices. This year, Apple is no longer going to bring iOS 17 or the latest version to iPhone 8, 8 Plus, or iPhone 10. If you have an iPhone 10s or later, including the iPhone 10R and iPhone SE second gen or later, then you'll be supported. Unfortunately, 8, 8 Plus, and 10 are no longer supported and won't get iOS 17. They will get iOS 16 updates, however. Now with this update, of course, this is a major update, but it was only 2.9 gigabytes on my iPhone 14 pro max, a pretty small update. And I'll have separate updates about watch OS 10 iPad OS 17 and more. As far as new features, let's go ahead and take a look at those. The first one has to do with widgets. Now I've had this standard widget here for a while, but if we slide over, there's now interactive widgets. So you can see, I have a song here. If I hit play, it will play in the music app. It shows in the dynamic Island. Apple has added a bunch of different interactive widgets and developers can add these too. If we hit the plus button, you'll see if we go into the podcast widget, there's different playlists and much more. It is a little bit buggy right now. So keep that in mind as early iOS betas always are. Now they've updated the lock screen picker as well. So if we press and hold, try that again, there we go. Go to the next one and add a wallpaper. If we scroll down, we have some new kaleidoscope wallpapers. And if we continue down, you'll see the new iOS 17 wallpaper. Now, one of the things that's really nice with this update, if we go into this and go to our options, we now have light and dark mode that's returned. Also, if we tap on the time here, we can now adjust the size of the font that we want specifically. So instead of just selecting a font and then you have to be stuck with that one, you can adjust it individually. So that's something they've updated with iOS 17. There's also a new standby mode. So let's get out of here. We'll go back. And if you're using a dock at night, you can now use standby mode with your iPhone. Now I have a stand here and there's a new option for this as well. If we go into our settings, you'll see there's a new standby mode. Under standby, we have the option to use it or disable it. If we have an always on display, we can turn that on or off. We also have a night mode option and motion to wake. So standby will turn on the display when motion is detected at night. So that's all new. Let's go ahead and put it on the stand. And I've found that sometimes it works right away. Other times I have to turn off the lights, then it will turn on. Now on a stand, you can see where it's dark. It's actually a red text. You can disable this in settings where I just showed, but it just sort of makes it nicer at night. If I turn on maybe a light here, it should go to sort of a, a daytime mode where it lightens up. So the color comes back and now we have the option to swipe through widgets so we can swipe through different things for events and weather. And then our calendar, we can also swipe to the right, which will bring up photos and different things that are notable. So, You've got those different things. And then also here you have a different clock display as well. So that's something they've added for standby. I think it's a nice feature, but you will have to have it charging and sort of on a stand at night, similar to what your Apple watch can do. Now, if we go into the phone app, Apple has updated this with sort of a new card or what they're actually calling a contact poster. So you'll see it says, share your name and photo with friends. We'll go ahead and hit continue. You'll see this the first time you go into it, it says enter your name, and then you can choose your poster. So you can choose a photo, Memoji or monogram, and then I can select maybe a selfie. We'll hit done. And that's what it will look like when I call someone else. So we'll hit continue. And so you can see my contact card. This is one of them and it's been customized. You could use a monogram or something else. So now let me place a call to myself. As you can see, there's a call coming in. If I tap on it, there's an all new card here or contact poster. And if I don't pick it up, all of a sudden it will go into voicemail, but it will now actually dictate that voicemail in real time to see if I want to pick that up or not. So you'll see it's gone to voicemail. I've got my phone over here where I might be able to pick it up and it should start dictating that voicemail in real time. So it's not working right now, but there we go. It just started working as it went into voicemail and it's picking it up from my voice on this other phone that I placed a call from. So you can see that I could decide to pick it up or I could even message them and say, can I call you later? So this is working in real time. Of course, that will be limited to your phone as well. Something else they've updated is airdrop. You can now just bring two phones together to airdrop different information. 
whether that be a contact, a file, or something else. So let's go ahead and try and airdrop something here. So we'll share it. And with airdrop, it says appear as Aaron Zolo. Let's see if I bring it close, if it works. And it doesn't look like it's working. As I bring it close, maybe that feature is still in the works, but you get the idea where you can just airdrop it. It says accept. And of course I can accept that photo. Now the overall dialogue does look a little bit different there, but that's something that's new as well as being able to airdrop that way with contacts. So you should be able to initiate it just by bringing it close and allowing you to airdrop that information. Again, this is an early beta, so it may not work as well as Apple showed, but hopefully in the future it works seamlessly. Also, if you're sharing a large file and you're airdropping it to someone and you don't have time to stick around, Apple will actually transmit that information over the internet now when you go out of range. So it will drop that file, whether it's a large movie or something else, over to someone else and it will just use end-to-end -end encryption and drop it to them. So that's really nice. Also, they've updated Siri in two different ways. Now you can just say Siri, Siri, what's the weather, what's the weather today? And there you can see it responded. You also can ask it a question and then continue without using that keyword again. Also, if we go into settings, we have the option to change this as well. So if we find Siri here, you have the option to listen for, and it says Siri or Hey, and then that word. So you can update that however you want. If you don't want that on at all, you can turn it off. So it works a little bit more seamlessly. Messages gets a pretty big update as far as a couple different things and the keyboard as well. So if we go into messages, you'll see in messages, I'm just responding to myself on this iPhone 11 here. It says, this is Aaron. If I want to reply to an individual, I can just swipe now and reply instead of pressing and holding. Then you can do a quick reply. This is a quick reply. And as you can see, it underlined the word quick when I mistyped it. So if I tap on it, you now have the option to quickly go back to it. So if I want it to be uns or misspelled and have it go back to what it was before, I can just tap on it and it will revert back. Also, they've changed search in here as well. So if you go in and maybe you go into your messages and search, search will have better filters in the future so you can better filter information you're looking for, maybe with specific keywords and more. You can also quickly share your location when you're texting someone else. So tap on your name or their name at the top, tap share location, and then you can change it to indefinitely until the end of day or for one hour. And then if you share that, it will just give them access through Find My to see where you're at. There's also a new feature called check-in to let your friends and family know when you arrived or didn't arrive to a location safely. So it will share that information with your friend, like location, battery level, and cell service status of the phone. And all of that information is end-to-end -end encrypted. Also, all of your apps are now in one place. Press the plus on the left here, and you can see your camera, photos, stickers, cache, audio, location, and then of course more. All of your different apps that have stickers. And if we go into stickers, we have new stickers for everything. So you can create a sticker for just about anything here. So if we tap on new sticker, looks like it's not working and you can actually create a sticker from a photo. However, this is really buggy and slow. So if I cancel this and then we go back, you can see here we have a bunch of different stickers, including all of the different emoji and more. So lots of different changes here, lots of different stickers that have been added and those stickers can be used across the OS now, including mail and more. There's also a new journaling app that Apple is adding later this year. If we go into Safari, you can see it here. It says coming later this year. That could be after iOS 17 launches. We don't really know, but it says a new app to write and remember an all new way to appreciate life's moments and preserve your memories. So you can journal it. It's personalized based off where you've been. It remembers different things such as photos, music, workouts, and more, and then sort of gives you suggestions as to what you can write. So no one can access it, but you, but you can make a full journal of where you've been and different information. Of course, you don't have to use it. You can disable it, but it's something coming later this year. There are so many more changes in this. While it's not as big as iOS 17, there are quite a few more changes all throughout the OS that I'll be covering in a full video a little bit later. I just wanted to get this out to share with you what's in here. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description as it's the new one for iOS 17. Let me know what you think of iOS 17 in the comments below. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.
Now, if you've made it this far into the video, thanks so much for watching. What do you think of iOS 17 and was it a disappointment or were you more excited about other things such as Apple vision pro? Let me know what you think in the comments below and thanks again for watching.